Good morning, everybody. Um, and we've just got Jenny on screen. She's dialing in from over east, and we're going to share this presentation together and walk through things. So do you want to say hello, Jenny? Everyone can see you. Hi, everyone. Um, so thank you for, for joining us for this session. Um, as Candice said, we're going to walk through some of the tools that the Digital Health Agency um, support, and we support here in WA. So I'm from WA Primary Health Alliance, uh, the Digital Health team lead. I know some of you in the room, um, some of you, many of you I've not met before, but we'll walk through some of those tools, some of the uses of them, um, and also talk a little bit about the support that's available to any organization who'd like to learn a little bit more, have some um, support on how to use them. I think we're probably good. To... Okay. Um, so before I start, and this is on behalf of both WA Primary Health Alliance and the Australian Digital Health Agency, we'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and the continuing connection to land, sea and community and pay our respects to them, their cultures and their elders past, present and emerging. I'm going to hand over to Jenny. Oh, actually, no, I'll do the agenda, sorry. Um, so as I said, we'll talk a little bit about the, or Jenny will talk a little bit about the digital health strategy itself, where things are going, what's, up, um, what's on the horizon, and some of those tools. She'll also talk about some of the success stories that we've had from WA, some really exciting, uh, innovative uses of the tools that are available. And then uh, I will run through a bit of a mock patient journey for audiology, and you will have to forgive me, and you will notice very quickly, I am not clinical at all. Um, so I will probably end up killing the patient at some point. Uh, and then finally, we'll move on to the resources and support available, as I said, before having a, hopefully a little bit of time for any questions. And I will also be available, I'll be around um, through to lunch as well. So if anyone wanted to catch me, please do. But I'll hand over to you, Jenny. Thank you so much. Thanks uh, for having me. I'm dialing in all the way from Brisbane today, uh, but I trust you're all having a great day. And I also just realized that I can't see the slides on my end. So Simon, uh, uh, I'll trust you to be transitioning them as, as we go along. Um, but again, thank you everyone. And um, just to sort of kick things off, we'll start off by having a look at um, the National Digital Health Strategy. So uh, the strategy has seven key strategic pillars and what they do is they basically form the basis of the work that the Australian Digital Health Agency is sort of working towards uh, and, and we're working towards, uh, you know, achieving these projects um, and working on them in collaboration with many different stakeholders, different partner groups all across the country. So definitely it is a very, very much a collaborative approach. And um, the aim is really to deliver um, digital health tools uh, and different sort of solutions on a national level um, so that we can give people more uh, choice, control, transparency over uh, their health information and also giving clinicians the tools that they need to deliver health services uh, efficiently whilst also keeping uh, patient health information secure um, and also giving you access to key health information that you might need about your patients um, in a timely manner sort of when exactly when you need it. Um, so what we'll do also in the presentation today is really sort of uh, bring it back to that on the ground level and share with you some uh, you know success stories, some really Real world stories from uh, healthcare providers that have been using these tools uh, and a patient story as well that will demonstrate to you exactly how these tools are, uh, you know, really transforming uh, the delivery of healthcare services across the country. So on the next slide, um, I've got sort of a really, you know, broad, quick overview of um, some of these digital health tools that we'll be highlighting to you to do today. Um, you're probably quite familiar with um, a, a few of them, but basically we've been working towards delivering these solutions as part of that sort of larger uh, digital health uh, strategy. 
Now, my health record, of course, is a really big key component of that. It's something that you know has been in play for quite some time now, uh, but it has had some significant uh, enhancements made to the system over the past year, uh, and, and there's still more enhancements uh, to come. So definitely um, a really big component of um, sort of the work that the agency has been very busy doing over the past uh, year. Um, and we have also had um, some sort of work progressing uh, in the secure messaging space. So we've got an increased amount of practitioners now using secure messaging. Uh, telehealth obviously sort of becoming a really, really key player in the way uh, health services can be delivered now. Um, I think you may have had a presentation earlier this morning about that. Um, and lastly, we do have electronic prescriptions. So they uh, are, you know, helping support um, those services, services like telehealth, um, and, and allow patients to have access to uh, their medications when they need them without needing uh, sort of that face-to-face -face, uh, interaction at all, offering them, again, more convenience, more flexibility uh, in, in terms of being um, able to access um, those services. So over the past two years, I think there's been recorded uh, more than 82 million telehealth consultations uh, since March 2020 uh, and 25 million electronic prescriptions that have been issued during the COVID-19 pandemic as well. So what um, we're finding is that people are really um, uh, now starting to experience what it means to have a better connected healthcare system. We have 23 million Australians who already have a My Health record. We've seen over the past year people actually now, uh, you know, choosing to have a My Health record, whereas they, they may not have um, had one in the past. Um, and they now can have immediate access to uh, really valuable, important uh, health information. They can access things like their vaccination status, their COVID-19 test results, uh, prescription information, uh, other, you know, information that's stored in my health record, like their allergies, um, pathology diagnostic imaging test results, and things like that. So we're definitely noticing uh, an increased uptake in the use of things like my health record, but also other digital health tools um, as well. So moving on, um, what we've also had uh, the pleasure recently of having a chat with acting professor Jill Benson. She was on a webinar panel with us and she spoke about her experience with digital health. So Jill is a medical doctor at Spinifex Health Service. It's based on Junjunjara country, um, one of probably the most sort of remote communities in Australia. Uh, it's around 750 kilometers east of Kalgoorlie. So very, very remote, small community. And it, it spans across the border between WA and South Australia. Now, Jill really wasn't using telehealth at all before COVID. So it's really was something that um, she had to start using and embrace because she's actually based in South Australia. So when the COVID pandemic hit and there were state border closures, um, her, you know, that community that she was looking after, uh, her patients, they, they weren't accessible to her anymore. So um, they, you know, really trusted her. She was their uh, trusted, you know, health professional that they've been seeing over many, many years. So she really had to uh, come up with new ways of, you know, connecting with them and delivering um, healthcare services um, to those patients in that community without uh, having sort of to be there face to face with them. So. So now I think she she's done over 200 telehealth consultations. She uh, does joint consultations as well. So she is able to dial in and have um, discussions with remote nurses, for example, and they can do some of the um, sort of physical, you know, examinations. They can be on the ground and she can be dialed in virtually uh, supporting the nurses during those consultations. Um, she is also able to work with other healthcare providers and, and again, join them in those joint consultations, even with specialists, for example. Um, so, you know, the, the patient may be referred to a specialist and they uh, 
could be having uh, a, a telehealth appointment with that specialist. They, they may not have met them before uh, and they can have Jill uh, on the line in that same appointment. She's got you know, all, all the notes that she needs in there, all the information at hand. And she can be there in that consultation to help uh, explain, help interpret, um, you know, to uh, the local people with, you know, in that community, uh, so that they can better understand some of the terminology that their specialist is, you know, sharing with them during that um, appointment. So uh, it, they have, you know, really found it so valuable there. Um, they can incorporate other tools into those telehealth appointments as well. So they can use things like video autoscopes. She can get, you know, those images remotely. Uh, they can do audiometry, lots of different tools they have access to now virtually, uh, supporting digital ear health um, and, and gathering that, you know, really valuable health information. And also then they're able to um, upload and share that information with the patient's My Health record um, so that that information is, you know, securely stored and it's available then for um, those individuals. In those communities, people are also quite mobile. They, they may be transiting through uh, different sort of communities as well. So it's really important that that health information that, you know, Jill helps sort of capture um, can then travel with them uh, if needed and it can ensure um, their continuity of care is maintained. So um, although telehealth may not have been um, something that they used in the community before, uh, it was something that really was introduced as, you know, a bit of an assessment. Uh, but definitely that they're now seeing huge benefits in in using this technology and, and it's you know there to stay it's not something that um, it, it, they're you know pl planning on stopping uh, in that health service um, another clinician that we have recently spoken to is Dr. Amanda Stafford. She works in the emergency department at the Royal Perth Hospital. Um, so she spoke to us about the use of my health record in her hospital and what she's been finding. Uh, again, is that um, those clinicians there um, across WA health facilities have really been, again, embracing my health record and starting to use it more often. So she's saying that she probably uses it every day, um, especially in that emergency department where obviously emergencies, like a lot of them happen uh, sort of after hours. Um, so it's really important to have access to, uh, you know, a source of information um, that can, you know, fill some gaps uh, probably and uh, provide these clinicians with an opportunity to, to make, um, uh, you know, clinical decisions that are based on information that they can now access. So um, what they're finding is that uh, they, they are finding information in my health record really valuable. And to, to those of you who might be working in primary care settings, what that shows is that it is really important for you to uh, keep contributing information to your patients' My Health Records because other healthcare providers are viewing this information uh, and, and they are finding it valuable. They can see information um, such as patients' medication lists, their medical history, test results, uh, and um, yeah, they're definitely sort of seeing the benefit of having uh, timely access to that information uh, through my health record as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a sort of clinician perspective and I might pass over back to Simon now who, who can share more of a sort of a patient story with us as well. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Jenny. Um, <clears throat> so as I say, prior warning, I may get things a little bit wrong in terms of the actual clinical aspect of this, but I just wanted to walk through a sort of sample of uh, a patient journey, the way that things could be used, the way that some of these tools could be used to support this young boy here. Um, we will call him Jack. So in this scenario, he has uh, attended to a, a, a primary care practice. It's not his usual one. He's been traveling. Um, he's obviously got a bit of a sore ear there. The doctor working with him who sees this patient, it's the first time she's ever met with him, so she doesn't have any history for him really. So um, the first thing she's able to do is have a look on my health record in a very similar way to the, uh, the hospital clinicians may do. Um, having a look on my health record, she's able to see that he's actually had ear issues in the past. Um, she's also able just to confirm that maybe there's not the, the, the history there from the parents or from or from the child themselves. 
Um, but she can see what medication he's had in the past and potentially any treatment that he's had for this particular issue. Based on that and that knowledge that certain things have been tried before and potentially that he has been diagnosed with an issue similar, similar to this previously, um, she is able to prescribe uh, some um, antibiotics in this case. She does that via an e-script. Potentially that e-script could actually be sent uh, directly through to um, the, the uh, child's father who isn't in the appointment but is close by to a pharmacy and can pick up that script straight away. So there's no need for that paper script in that first instance. So just from this first appointment, we've got that background information that the doctor's been able to find on my health record. Uh, gives her a little bit of a sense of urgency maybe that there, there is an ongoing issue that needs to be treated. Um, she's able to provide that script. And the next step as well for her may be, because she realizes that this is you know, a potential larger issue, uh, but also that she's probably not going to see this child again. He's gonna go back to his, his um, usual place of residence. He's gonna go back to his usual practitioner. She will also, at this stage, upload an event summary for the patient. And that just sort of details that consultation that she's had, gives that little bit of background information um, for the new, or for the patient's usual GP. So. Jack goes off, everything seems fine for a little while, but then he's got a sore air again. And he's back home, he goes to see his usual uh, clinician. And she, again, realizes that you know, this is an ongoing issue. She may have already had that background information in her own clinical system, you know, that first, uh, first time that this issue occurred. But the, the child or the, or the parents of the child do say, you know, actually we did have another problem, we did see another GP, but can't quite remember what, what happened. You know, well, I, there was some medication given to us, but can't remember what it was called. We tried it and it worked for a little while, but we're back here again. So the GP in that instance, again, can have a look at my health record, um, potentially view that event summary, so they'd actually be able to see that full consultation that the previous uh, clinician had put up onto my health record. Um, even if that original clinician hadn't put up an event summary, they'd still be able to see details of the medication that was provided. Um, for those of you that don't know, you can access PBS uh, information from my health record as well, or potentially the dispense history from a pharmacy that provided that medication. So she's able to reassure herself and to understand exactly what, what was uh, tried with this child before. On the basis that this is a recurring issue now and the uh, antibiotics don't really seem to have had an effect, she realizes maybe we need to do an onward referral for this, for this child. Um, she may be relatively new in the area or just not aware of which services are available. So what she can do at that stage is access Health Pathways. This is one of the tools that WAFA directly support. It's not connected to the ADHA so much. Um, but for anyone who's not aware, Health Pathways is a uh, um, WA-maintained uh, um, well, pathway system gives an opportunity to have a look and see what services are available. It offers suggestions on, on the approach to take with a particular issue. And then it can direct you to services that can support that person. So she has a look on Health Pathways and identifies a specialist, um, potentially from WAX, potentially a private specialist, potentially from maybe one of you in the room who can support this particular patient. Also within Health Pathways, there are the actual referrals themselves. So she could directly find the referral letter. Uh, I hope she doesn't fax it, but let's be realistic, she probably does. Um, but in an ideal world, she would then send a secure message directly through to the, the organization who's, um, who's going to then have a look and look after this child. So she sends that secure message directly through to them. That means that message, there's no chance of it going, being faxed to the wrong number. Um, and having worked in health for a long time, I do know that faxes end up in all sorts of places that they should never actually end up. The secure message goes straight through, and if we're talking about WA Health, for example, it could go straight through to the central referral service. When that's received, there'll be an acknowledgement that comes back, so she can be quite comfortable that there is um, a, 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 um, an appointment that will be made for this child. She, at that time, also could add more to, to my health record. Um, and that may again be an event summary, which could be quite useful for the clinician who is then going to pick this child up, um, just for further information beyond what's already in the my, uh, sorry, already in the referral itself. 
So being, let's say this uh, child is up in Kananara at the moment, there may be some visiting specialists who could support, um, but they may not be coming on a regular schedule or they, they may not be coming at all. So in this case, um, he's been referred through to a telehealth service and that's based down in Perth. So he calls up, I didn't have a picture of him with a phone or uh, in front of a computer screen, but he calls up and in this case, he's actually doing that, and this is certainly a potential, uh, and I think as Jenny said, this is something that is actively happening in places. He could have that telehealth appointment in the general practice, potentially, alongside his clinician, um, and that can be really beneficial just to kind of support with any concerns. Maybe if he, his parents, aren't quite sure of some of the, the you know, terminology that's being used or, or just need to be there for a little reassurance for him, they can do that. Potentially as well, we could still have that telehealth appointment with the clinician and the child. They could be in two separate places. The, uh, the G GP could dial in to that consultation. We've got our specialist there. He's very happy because he's able to do whatever it is that's needed to really support that child and put in a plan to support that. Um, again, at that stage, potentially if there's any prescriptions needed, that uh, clinician who's providing the telehealth service could send that as an electronic script. So it's then available again to just be collected, no need for the paper um, prescription to be sent. And then of course, as a result of that, all of that care that's been offered, we have a happy child again. Everything's fine, his ear no longer is causing him any issues. So that's just a, a really short sort of example of some of the sort of approaches that can happen there. Um, all of those tools, my Health Record, Secure Messaging, Health Pathways, Electronic Prescriptions, they are available to many of us in the room. Um, you'll notice, obviously, I haven't walked through how those work, uh, and that might be what a lot of people are hoping to find out. I hope that people are hoping to find out um, how those work. And that's where, really, we can kind of come on to this next section here, which is the resources and the support that are on a offer. And this is from both myself, my team in WA, primary health, but it's also from the Digital Health Agency. Um, so via WA Primary Health, we would direct you through to practice assist. Now, don't be too concerned up there. I know it says strengthening, strengthening general practice in WA, but certainly for the digital health space, we've got a really wide remit. We're able to support pretty much anyone in this space, um, anyone outside of the public hospital system. So if you work for a general practice, if you work for an AMS, if you work for, uh, if, if you're a specialist, if you are a, an allied health provider, please do feel free to contact us. Um, practice Assist is just uh, practiceassist.org.au. Um, I should know that off the top of my head, .com.au. Ooh, that's terrible, I thought I had it up there. Sorry, um, or you can phone us or email through and we absolutely are able to support and that is for anything to do with health pathways, my health record, telehealth support. So for telehealth, for example, we can actually support you with a free Commonwealth funded, um, clinically appropriate telehealth platform. Um, E-prescribing, secure messaging, any form of support, query, um, we, can, we can help with, we are absolutely there for. And Jenny, I'm just gonna pass back to you for your slide, which there is some crossover and we're not guarded, we are absolutely happy for you to contact or, or go through either of the organizations for any of the support here. But Jenny, if you just want to speak to the um, authors you have. Yeah, definitely. So obviously for, for, for those of you who are interested in you know, using these technologies, if you just want you know, some questions answered about them, we definitely have um, a lot of sessions that we are running. Um, a, a lot of the sessions that we do have on offer, um, as you can see on that slide there, are practical sort of demonstration sessions as well. So uh, specifically around the use of my health record, um, if you are interested in knowing a bit more about how you can use use it in your practice, in your actual software that you're accessing and using on a daily basis. We have um, sessions where we demonstrate uh, to you through our training platform that um, looks very similar to you know, the software that you're using. Uh, in real life, we can demonstrate to you how you can uh, view certain types of information within patients' My Health records. We can demonstrate to you how you can upload information um, and in general sort of 
talk to you about the benefits of, of accessing this information because there's a lot there um, and sometimes it's good to sort of have a look and, and find out, you know, maybe there are things that um, you're missing in, in your regular practice that no one sort of showed you in the past and, and you may, you know, not know what you might be missing out on. So. I would definitely encourage you to dial into some of these sessions and um, yeah, get, get more of a sort of practical um, demonstration as well so that you can start to use these uh, in practice uh, for any, you know, practices that are interested in, you know, connecting to the Michael Threkwood system, uh, joining it and wanting to know a bit more about the background uh, things you need to have in place. Um, you know, some things uh, you need to have in place for your organizations like certain sort of policies and we talk you through all of those requirements, all of your um, participation sort of obligations on, on a practice sort of level in some of the sessions that we offer as well. Um, and of course, we are also running uh, lots of sessions on electronic prescribing. Some of them are a bit more sort of formal for specific types of um, practitioners, but uh, we also have been running uh, frequent Q&A sessions as well. We do that for electronic prescribing or my health record where you can just dial in. We don't present you with any slides or anything like that. It's just an opportunity for you to come along and ask whatever questions you might have. And, you know, as sort of experts in the field, we can respond to your questions there and then. So I would encourage you to have a look on our digitalhealth.gov.au website, where we list all of our upcoming sessions. There all on there and you can register for something that you know suits you and is of interest uh, specifically to you and your area of practice so yeah thank you thank you Jenny I think we've got I make it three probably two and a half minutes um, for any questions that people might have before I do that I did just double check it is practiceassist.com.au that's terrible of me um, if there's anything anyone would like to ask now, we're, we're absolutely available to do that. Otherwise, I will be here, as I say, through the lunch break and, and very happy to speak one-on-one. -on -one. Um, oh, we do have a couple of questions. Hi. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jenny, I, I'm not sure if you could hear that question. The question was, um, can Aboriginal health workers uh, use my health record? And the answer is yes, that's something yes, that is absolutely. available. Absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, there's lots of training opportunities as well. So if, if there's a specific um, software platform you use, we have a session for that. If it's say Communicare, for example, then you can dial into one of those sessions um, and have a look at how you can actually sort of use that. Sorry, um, MMEX wasn't on that list and I'm just wondering why that is. Is it because it doesn't link to my health record? No, it absolutely, um, I do believe you can access my health record through MMEX, but we don't have a training platform available to us where we can demonstrate the function, unfortunately. So, um, although, you know, we wish we had a training platform for every software that's out there, we, we, we have a limited range. So those are the ones that, um, you know, we're able to demonstrate. Uh, you may uh, maybe benefit from dialing into a session where we demonstrate um, the national provider portal. So that's uh, the um, web sort of platform that um, clinicians can access if they don't have access to software that, you know, otherwise, um, uh, would connect to my health record. Uh, but in that session, you know, although it may look different to what you would see on your end, for example, um, we would still describe to you uh, all the different clinical documents that you can access, everything that you can see in a patient's my health record. Um, so, you know, definitely would encourage you to still dial into a session. Maybe that might be a national provider portal mm -hmm. session um, or, or another software session, you know, just, um, being mindful that it may not look exactly like your software. Um, but if you have any specific questions, if, if you want to know something exactly about, you know, how, how to upload something or how to view something through your software, and we don't have 
a session for you, uh, still reach out to the agency um, that we have a help centre and, and, you know, we can help you with figuring out how, how to get to someone's Machat record and how to find information in there. So um, definitely reach out to us for support if you need it. Uh, the one final thing I'd add to that is, although there's not that software simulator, there are still some crib sheets from, for MMEX, which do kind of go step by step. So I can, we can, uh, they're on the digital health site, and we're very happy to also talk through, yeah, how that could work. Quick question, if I were to, is link, link, sorry, access to my health record linked to APRA registration? Uh, yes. So, uh, Oh, Jenny, do you want? I'll, I'll jump in there. It's um, yes, it is. So you do need a unique identifier called a HPII, um, and very broadly speaking, yes, it is linked to APRA. Everyone has one of those IDs on their APRA profile, um, but there are also uh, it, it's not a given that you need to have an APRA registration. There are other alternatives. We can't. Yeah, uh, I, I know that um, allied health professionals can apply uh, to Services Australia to get an identifier, even if they're not um, listed on APRA, for example. Uh, but there's also, you know, ways your uh, organisation where you work can authorise you with access to my health record if it's appropriate, um, so long as it is included in your um, organisation's access policy and if you have. Um, the sort of software function to, to allow you with that access, but it is it is possible. Um, uh, one final question, Jenny. Um, the the issue of being able to use my health record to monitor key performance indicators. So one of the struggles in the um, uh, description of the case that we had from Simon was that you know this child's getting different assessments at different places or different uh, audiogram you know audiology assessments. Um, is there any way that can be pulled out of the system to give a how many children it, of a particular age are getting these tests done that are being uploaded to my health record? Is, uh, is the agency doing work to say how well is our health service performing on the basis of my health record, giving us that information, because that's really one of the challenges I think we have in this space. It's a perfect sort of set of conditions for really using something like my health record, but it's actually getting that information out of it. Do you want to make any comments about that? Yeah, so uh, unfortunately I don't believe there's a function sort of now that would allow you to get, um, you know, organisation specific sort of data in terms of what your sharing with my health record or accessing uh, my, my, my population-based data so if you're oh. responsible for the whole of western australia for yeah. a, a medical issue this is a key performance indicator for this how how well do we do it it, it, uh, it's, the, yeah. it should be po it's possible i know it's possible in terms of uh from a um Getting that data, yeah, definitely. The, the agency, you know, is doing some work to, to try and look at that to get, um, you know, more sort of data and access data so that we can sort of analyse it in a better way. Um, but it's not something uh, that, that we are sort of, um, you know, reporting uh, on at the moment. I don't know, Simon, if you want to sort of add anything else uh, uh, very to that from your Very expertise. conscious of the time, first of all, but I think I'd be very happy to speak from the primary health side, there might be, yeah, we'll have a chat. I think that's Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Sorry for overrunning. Come on, kick me off the le legs and it's fine. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye.